Hi, welcome to my new video on international development aid. In this video I will uh, cover uh, the effects that international development aid has had in the last um, decades. So in theory the basic goal of aid is to promote economic growth and development in low-income countries. The main drivers of aid over the last few decades have been the, the institutions that were born um, after the Second World War, the World Bank and the IMF, and initially the goal was to replicate the success achieved with the Marshall Plan reconstructing Europe after the war. So basically the focus was on large-scale infrastructure projects, investment in physical capital and so on. And over time, as the Cold War developed, uh, aid was used as a geopolitical tool by Western countries in order to prevent developing countries to shift towards the uh, Soviet bloc. And then after the, uh, the end of the Cold War, especially in the 80s, late 80s and 90s, um, there was a shift towards the so-called structural adjustments uh, from the Washington Consensus that basically designed one-size-fits-all uh, policies for developing countries. But looking back at this uh, period in time, from the 60s until nowadays, the empirical evidence tells us that international development aid did not work. It was not able to promote economic growth in developing countries, and there is even evidence that there might be a, a, even a negative effect on growth because of aid. So the question we want to answer is why did aid not work? So over the last few years, there's been many uh, theories being raised on why this has happened, why did aid not work, and uh, I'm going to cover all of them. So basically we have one of them, which is mainly uh, the one held by the World Bank, which says that aid did not work because we didn't impose enough conditionality on good policies being implemented, and that aid would have been effective if we had been conditioning on the quality of, of policy that were being financed. This is mostly the view held by the World Bank and the IMF. A second view held by Jeffrey Sachs uh, at Columbia basically says that the, the, the reason why aid did not work is because the amount of aid was too small. That in order to have a positive impact of aid, we needed to have more aid. Because according to this view, only large amounts of aid are able to allow poor countries to escape poverty traps. The third view, um, held by Bill Easterly and, and many others, says that aid could not possibly work for many different reasons. For example, aid is, is bad for incentives, that this top-down approach that usually is uh, used in, uh, in foreign aid uh, actually distorts developing economies and uh, you know usually the, 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 the aid programs are really badly designed and there's no accountability so you know there's a lot of corruption and leakage of funding and overall we needed to pay more attention into you know how things work at the bottom at the, at the grassroots level in order for aid to work. And the last view held by Duflo and, and others is um, somewhat more empirically oriented, it's, it's the one that has been preaching for randomized evaluations and randomized controlled trials. And basically this view says that A did not work because we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know um, how to really affect poor countries in a positive way because we just didn't know how poverty worked. And what we need to do is we need to experiment and, uh, and learn from these this experiments in order to, to design aid programs in, in a good way and make them more cost effective. So now I'm going to go over each one of these theories in detail in, uh, in later videos.